So the charging of VAT around accommodation can be complicated because the tax legislation has different definitions on when VAT is supposed to be charged. And there's a distinction between a dwelling and actual commercial accommodation and a definition on what commercial accommodation actually entails. But in short, uh, for property investor to understand when to pay VAT, when not to pay VAT, so normal letting and hiring of a house, for example, or a flat for long term uh, purposes where the person's going to live on this property and they don't really get other services. It's, it's just the living and maybe the water and electricity typically is treated as exempt from VAT. Uh, why? Because obviously we don't want to charge VAT uh, with the provision of housing under those circumstances. However, when it comes to commercial accommodation, this is when you're looking at things like Airbnb. So these are very short term deals where people are utilizing services like hotels and Airbnb. And this is a supply of a service. It normally comes with things like room service, food, uh, a whole range of add-ons. Uh, that are charged in the price and the services provided. And in those circumstances, VAT is leviable at the 14%, uh, oh, 15%, sorry, standard rate. The confusion around student accommodation comes in because there's a special rule when it comes to the charging of VAT, especially in accommodation where the person is going to reside on the property for over 28 days. And this is kind of a gap uh, when it comes to the VAT rules where it's not exactly short term, but it's not as long term as one would normally anticipate. And there's a whole bunch of services that are included in it, including a certain community communal uses and communal services and that sort of thing. And when it comes specifically to student accommodation, because there's a sharing of rooms and the shared usage of a number of different amenities, um, it could very well be that student accommodation is charged under these special rules, which is normally around 60% of the amount. So if there's a vetable, if there's a supply, you'd look at 60% of that supply and you charge the 15% VAT on uh, that 60%, right? Now, not all student accommodation is subjected to VAT. It really depends on what you're providing along with the student accommodation. So it almost feels like a normal apartment where the student is simply renting out an apartment. It's got its own kitchen. It's got its own bathroom. And then you could actually call this the letting of a dwelling. But as soon as this becomes a almost a serviced a, apartment where they're sharing of a whole bunch of different amenities and that cost is factored into the rent, uh, you may need to charge VAT, uh, possibly on these special rules, because it's over 28 days.